Hello, I'm going to tell you about a startup I'm involved with called Ontology 2. And uh, it all really started about 10 years ago when I was, my wife and I were living in Germany. And we were traveling around, going to zoos, taking pictures of animals, and thinking, man, we got pictures of every kind of animal you see in a zoo. We got to put this all together, make a website, get it really well organized. And a few years later, I start getting serious about this. And I'm like, man, I took all these pictures with, with an old film camera. I have to scan them all. The pictures on Flickr are so much better than my pictures. And how can I ever really make this work? It's not going to be good. And then, then I found out about this thing called Creative Commons, which is that a lot of pictures in places like Flickr and stuff like that are placed under a license that lets you use them. There's some restrictions. You, you have to give credit to the person who gave the photo. but. Otherwise, you're free to use them, and you can use this to do a lot of cool stuff. So I had this domain name I'd registered for a while. I said, heck, I'm going to make a website. And I made animalphotos.info. And I, I did it the really obvious way. I mean, I used a, this is a WordPress blog, actually. And I uh, made a list of animals by hand and went to Flickr and added them all myself. But then I'm like, man, this is getting slow. And Walter Pimentier, who's a Wik Wikipedia editor, tells me this thing called DBpedia which is a big database of facts extracted from Wikipedia, so you know an albatross is a bird, and it's all done, everything in here is a URL. And because of that, these data sources, this is the same, Jason showed you the same slide basically, but all these data sources hook into each other. So you've got hundreds of data sources with hundreds of billions of facts that are hooked together. So once you add, anybody can add new stuff to this. So I'm like, okay, how do I take this process and automate it? And so I get the idea, I gotta identify these topics. DBpedia's got a list, I can just ask for the birds. I search for candid images on Flickr. I filter images from the search that are correct and I write, descri I write descriptions of them and this is all a great idea except it's impossible. Uh, but it's not because Amazon has a service called Mechanical Turk which lets you pay people to answer questions. So I can just be like, hey, is this a picture of a tiger? And they can say yes or no. Uh, describe what you see in this photo and then I've got my headline. Uh, so, yeah, I want to make this bigger, and cars are kind of categorical kind of thing that's very similar to animals, so I made a website about cars, and by this point, I'm actually getting some real ad revenue, and I'm thinking, how do I make this thing bigger? And, you know, because let's scale it up. So the business model here is that people use my images, they make links to my website because they use my images, my site gets more traffic, I get more advertising revenue, and I can use that advertising revenue to gather more content and people use the images more, and it's a circle, it just keeps turning. So if I wanna make this big, there's a question, how big can I make it? How many things are there? And there's about three and a half million things in Wikipedia. I mean, there's an, you can you could give a number to every grain of sand on the beach, but the game of 20 questions says that, you know, you've, with 20 questions, you can select about one of our, what about a million topics or so that actually really matter to people? This is Freebase, which is something that's kind of like DBpedia, but actually a little better. And you can see the really big categories you've got in here are places, people, creative works, like books and movies and stuff. And then I got the whole idea of really focusing on places, because computers can reason about places, because you know that Brooklyn is a part of New York. You know the Statue of Liberty is so many miles from Times Square. You could automate that. So I made a site about New York City using this technology. And then, then I just got an idea. You know, there's this whole cloud of ideas that surround the Earth, kind of the same way the atmosphere surrounds the Earth. I started thinking, let's, let's try to make a map of it. Let's try, let's try to gather pictures. And I got to think about a noascope, which is a machine that takes pictures of maps ideas and takes pictures. And that's Ukabu. Uh, ukabu is a, comes from a Japanese word that means flying or floating. But Ukabu is a collection of free pictures of everything on Earth. And when I took this screenshot, Ukabu just had places in it. But right now we're loading people. It's about twice as big. And one thing it offers that's really unique is a semantic API. So a machine that wants to get a picture of Thailand can use a URL that's really precise. It's not just some word, but it really means one thing. And they can get images with almost perfect precision. Which comes out of a little question of, you know, what do words really mean? Why do computers have a hard time understanding language? You look at the sense the ink is in the pen and the pig is in the pen. Noam Chomsky can't help you with this problem. <laughs> you have to know something about ink and pigs and pens. There's just all these facts you have to know. And so people have written down the whole story of what it is to be human and all the things we do. There's a human memo. And there was a guy, Doug Lenato, who had an idea back in the 80s. He did something called the Psych Project, which is trying to capture this all and organize it from the top down, but it didn't really work. And so I've kind of got this idea that, you know, top down, bottom down, I don't care. I just care if it works. And I just want to gather in data sources, stick things together, test, and just try to grow this thing up bigger and bigger. 
and uh, try to peel off little pieces of the problem that I know to solve. And that kind of comes to the whole point of ontology too. I, I know how to make these photo collections now, but generally we can construct a knowledge base, develop profitable applications from them, and use the feedback we get from people, plus the ad revenue, to build our knowledge base bigger and better.